What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, the Batman 2, Brian, is scheduled to be filming next year, early next year, right? 2025? Yep. According to Andy Serkis. Yes. And what we speculate to be a response to all the, I guess, negative news regarding the delay or the start of of filming for the Batman 2 because it's been a while already. So we we, we certainly want to see it. But what does the Batman 2 have to deliver in terms of what story it needs to tell next or what themes they should focus on, Brian, in order for this movie to be successful? We've been talking already for a, a very long time. <clears throat> in the past, we've had several conversations of what about what we would like to see. But uh, what... We've never really, I guess, had a dedicated show talking about it. So the Batman 2, Brian. To me, Brian, what I need to see in order for the Batman 2 to be successful, because we can't see, obviously, more of the same. I don't think Matt Reeves is that type of storyteller. But he certainly has to go and explore a couple of things. One being the character of Bruce Wayne and his development into that character. Whether he goes for it or not, Brian, I don't know. If he doesn't, Brian, I think it'll be a huge disappointment. I give him a pass on this, Brian, because this Batman is still finding himself, right? He's still trying to understand what he needs to be in order for him to be effective in that world. So that's one. The villain, Brian, or the antagonist, We've always talked about it making sense of it being the Court of Owls for this world. I think we've had, I, not that I've had enough of, of the Joker, but I just, I'm not ready to see another iteration just yet, especially with James Gunn's world still yet to be developed and we don't know what that will be. And then we got Joaquin Phoenix's movie. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't need that to be the next thing. The Court of Hours, I think something, Brian, that's, that's never really been done, right? I, I, right? In the Gotham show, did they touch on it, right? On the Gotham it's series? Not, it, yeah, I guess, yeah. But like, not enough people saw that to exactly. do it as, so, yeah, been done. The Court of Hours is a very interesting uh, group of individuals, Brian, and it'll certainly... I'm pretty sure Matt Reeves can certainly tie a lot of things to his family, to his, his to into his history, Brian. That could be uh, worked in that'll make it interesting, Brian. Um, your thoughts in terms of what you expect from the Batman Two in terms of storyline and development? Well, I 100% think that the evolution of Bruce Wayne is going to happen. Whether this movie is viewed as a step forward in the series, I think ultimately hinges on Pattinson's performance as Bruce Wayne. I think the reason I'm optimistic is because of that final scene of the first movie where when he's giving the voiceover and he puts his hand and the, and the one person he's saving on the rooftop puts their hand on his shoulder when he's Batman and he puts his hand on that person's shoulder in return and he kind of says it's not enough. To me, that's it, right? Like that's an understanding of your film. Film is a great intro. It's not enough to get you to where you want to go over two in, movies two and three. Now, where I think the, the studio space is fun for Pattinson is I don't think you want to see fully evolved, affable Bruce who's completely at ease in society either. Mm -hmm. I don't think we, we get all the way there, right? I think part mm -hmm. of what this series is trying to do that makes sense to me is this is a kid who saw his parents get murdered in front of him when he's, a kid, when he's young. And so if he's in his 20s, and he kind of hasn't totally fleshed out and dealt with it and processed it, he should have damage, right? He should yeah. have some social awkwardness. awkwardness yes, should, yeah, yeah. Right. And so what you want to see is the in-between. You want to see flashes of humanity. You want to see maybe it is a little bit of almost overacting and effort at times to, to blend in. And then you want to see him brooding at other times. Like That could be a strength. I mean, that could be a strength for Pattinson. It could be a strength for the character. And you almost want to see the character succeed and fail as Bruce yeah. in this movie because we saw so little of Bruce in the first movie. It was really Batman-centric. It really, they introduced us to the character through Batman. Yeah. So 
So I think that's number one. I think number two is you're absolutely right. I think number two to me is stay away from the Joker. It's great that Barry Keoghan cameoed as him and you have him sitting there. Do not pull a ripcord on that in the second movie. Mm. The story, the story was not, a, the first one was not leading up to the Joker. The yeah. Joker was a cameo that happened alongside the Riddler. The story was about this sordid family history of Gotham. Yes. That's the strand you were pulling on. So go there because yes. that will take you to Quarter Owls. It will take you to Talons. It'll take you to things that you can get great action set pieces. You can have interesting acting in ways that we haven't seen before rather than shoehorning in the character that everyone knows best in the Joker just to get the Joker opposite back. Mm. I mean, I'm not convinced this whole trilogy needs the Joker ultimately. Me neither. My, this, here's the thing, Brian, and what I want to see in, when I see the Joker next time. If they play on Batman's unwillingness to be fatal with his uh, foes, that test... I'd rather see it being done with Adam Richardson's Batman, the brave and the bold, than the Joker being Mayor Humdinger. I don't want to see that. I want to see a, a, a match of which I want to see Joker push him to his, to Batman's mental limits as to what he's willing to do to stop him. And I don't want to necessarily see it here. I want to see Bruce. I, this is a Batman show. This is not. This, I mean, this is a Batman movie. This is not. You know what I'm saying? This is Batman doing Batman things. I don't want the star of it to be anyone else. I'd rather have Batman be the star and everybody be supporting. But she was in the first one. Yeah. Ryan? And I want that to continue. I agree. I also think another thing that would be problematic with bringing the Joker in into the second movie is the Riddler is not a physical opponent for Batman. The Riddler is a mastermind. Yes. We already saw this idea of Batman playing against the puppeteer, effectively. <laughs> In essence, the Joker would almost be riffing on that all over again. Yeah. That, I think, would make the second one repetitive. Yeah. Whereas if you go down the rabbit hole of Court of Owls, like I said, if you follow even some of the elements of the comics, right? Like they have this, they have these team of assassins that they send yeah. out to do their work called the Talons. Okay, so there's your physical match. But the implication I think we saw in the when he's in getting that old footage is that his family was dirty. Like that's yeah. implied. And that's yeah. kind of interesting. Like they, you know, they yeah. always hold they typically hold up the Waynes as sort of like the golden children of Gotham, right? And it's like, I like the idea that Thomas Wayne might have been into some stuff and you know, needed yeah, yeah. yeah. The family. That's, yes. Right. And so that's more interesting, I think, for the exploration of Bruce and Batman to kind of grapple with and like what villains he comes into contact with there. It's to me like much more freeing. It's much more liberating to create yeah. into a movie than it is to say like, "Hey, we got to go back to Joker's pulling the strings, and there's a henchman out in the field fighting Batman, and Batman's trying to you know run all over town and defuse bombs and mm -hmm. solve puzzles because he just did that and mm -hmm. sort of won and sort of lost right at the end of this first movie. Like he he solved a lot of the puzzles, but the city got flooded. Like he kind of yeah. lost. Like the bombs yeah, went off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to see that again. And I don't think anyone else does either. Yeah. Brian, I, I, as you were talking, I, I was reminded of uh, the, there was a rumor that the next film would uh, involve Hush. Mm -hmm. um, do you think Hush will be the main antagonist or will the court of... Because if this is a trilogy, I would assume that Hush would be the sort of second act of a third act that will involve the Court of Isle. That that's very much a rumor, so we don't we don't know if that's going to be true or not. Mm -hmm. They could always co-opt some of the comic stories and combine. You know, you could you could install a villain like Hush and connect it to Court of Isles and swap that person in um, for another role. I guess I'm okay with it just because we haven't seen it. I'd much rather see a villain we haven't seen before. Is it necessary? I don't know. Like I said, I, I think it would be a bolder choice for this trilogy to really kind of mostly stay away from those sort of classic villains. But yeah. I, I mean, I, I get why they would want to kind of have someone who's at least more physically, I don't know, I guess, I guess he's out there against him. Um, 
because this is right so hush can fight basically can fight as well as batman can um in theory and he yeah, also can, he could he could also disguise himself and like you yeah. know so there's you know he's almost like it's almost like fighting a a mission impossible agent or something uh, and i i kind of feel like maybe they want to have a little bit of that chat the kind of cat and mouse game that's okay i mean i can live with that as long but as the, the quarter miles has their fighters as well though talents right talents. Yeah, that's what yeah. i'm saying you, if you made hush the head of the talents you could probably put him into the gotcha. this comics true storyline if you wanted yeah, because mm. the talents would go. I think in the thing they would wear the the actual owl mask, right? They, they're yes, the ones yes. who would dress up as the owl. I think it was what they were white. I think it was they went out as white owls. I think that's what it was originally. It, Batman was wearing dark and oh, originally, they fight. Oh, gotcha, I think so. I gotcha. yeah. Because I saw so, some uh, uh, animated movies where they're all black. Okay, but yeah, maybe have the, the, the the owl uh, masks on. So, I think number three is I want to <laughs> go back to the rumor mill, and then I'll t- kick it back to you. Is but I, this one I'm a little less sure on. Robin, right? So there's rumors that there's a Robin in this. How, like, how do you feel about it? And if there's a Robin, do you see a path for them to actually have it be truly additive to the story? I just don't see any room for it, Brian. I can see it being possibly a third film where Robin is more at risk because of the the, 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 the Court of Owls are more involved in his in Bruce's life or something like that or you know what I'm saying but not in the second one I think it's just too soon I don't I, I just can't see right now in this world that Matt Reeves has built where a young kid is out there beating up gangsters. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just, I don't know. So here's where I go back and forth on it a little bit. I'm 90% out, but I just said the key to the movie is Bruce Wayne's evolution as a human. Mm -hmm. If they were to focus that challenge into the relationship between Bruce and now this younger kid, who he effectively has to rescue and kind of shepherd and help deal with his own grief. Maybe, like maybe if you just sort of said, like as opposed to him dealing with society, it's really him having this one meaningful relationship that he has to hold together. And Robin is kind of otherwise teetering on the verge of being a psychopath or, you know, going on his own revenge mission or whatever. I don't know, like maybe there's something there. My problem with it though is, and this is my last thing for Matt Reeves, you got to get this movie shorter. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, man. You got away. Yeah. I feel like they got away with it in the oh, first. Oh yeah, they, got, they definitely got. They I definitely feel like, got away with it. Right? The first time around. To me, that's like a, a movie that should have been 220. That was like 250. And yeah. so I'm like, yeah. And and the audience is, you know, the audience is showing like, yeah, they'll go see Oppenheimer. They'll go see your movie if it's really good. But like, I think Batman. For Batman to be a north of Batman two to be north of a billion dollars, which is where they will expect it to be, I think they need to get that movie down at two twenty, two fifteen. And to me, it's like you start putting Robin in alongside Court of Owls, not enough time. Like you yeah. just don't have enough time to really service yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the Batman two and what you expect from it. And we're going to revisit this in oh, September yeah. because the penguin is clearly going to point us in a couple Certain. of directions. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is a deliberate. Yes. We're putting this out now and then we'll come back to it when we got the show. We're also going to be doing shows uh, where yep. we talk about uh, Batman, the animated series episodes that we found interesting. There was one that Brian mentioned called the heart of ice that I want to take a look back before I, um, talk about it because we want to stay in that um world of the batman the anime series so that we can sort of get a get a good contrast Brian. because if there is any yeah uh with the animated series and what we're going to be getting with the cape crusader august 1st we just want to get in the mood we want to yes. get in the mood so we got to go yes. back to the 90s go back to our childhood watch some of the classic episodes of that of that show and hopefully you guys enjoy kind of revisiting that along along with us. We'll do a couple of them before August 1st. 
Yeah, I also like that Poison Ivy when he was she was first introduced, John. Yeah, there you go. That See, that's what I mean. We'll do a hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Batman Two and what to ex- or what we should expect. What do we want? Does does having a Robin in there make sense? Does having a Joker make sense? Haven't we seen enough of the Joker already? Do is it almost like seeing Solo and then killing off this dude six months previous, and he, we're already seeing a Solo movie? Like we've already gotten enough of the Joker. We don't need to see any more of him. We we get it. We want to see more things that put Batman in a situation again. And if we do the Joker, I would rather see it in, in James Gunn's world than Matt Reeves at this point. I did see the hype train has started for. Uh, Lady Gaga, though, I already I did see the tagline got dropped today, like that her her portrayal of Harley Quinn will quote blow your mind. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do see her doing a good job, Ryan. This is a musical. I, she she has acting chops, Ryan. This is yeah. going to be very interesting to see because, again, Harley Quinn was created when during the Batman the animated series. Yeah, right. She's, she's still brand spanking new that people can iterate and do better um but yeah let us know in the comments below what you guys think and we'll see you next time on the nigeria report the show goes on yeah!